hello and welcome Yvonne Gaybauer here with my therapy room and I'm going to do my glue gun tree that I did at our local art gallery at a mixed media class I took the other day with my friend Karen Birchall and I didn't record it so I thought I would do a, a second canvas so you can see here I created the tree with um, a glue gun and then painted it. So I'm going to take you through my process of what I did. So I started out, um, I grabbed some uh, dress pattern and I had picked this up at our local thrift store and I simply tore it into strips, pieces, chunks, whatever, and adhered it to my canvas using Mod Podge. Crinkled it up and bunched it up and all that kind of stuff and uh, just uh, um, adhered it all over the all over the canvas, and I would create wrinkles and all kinds of yummy texture. This is a great way to add texture to a page without having to do um, texture paste or whatever. And just make sure you do the edges as well. And here I've got pieces of burlap sack, and it actually is the uh, um, a burlap sack that I purchased at a local like I don't know farm supply store or whatever and adhered it on with the Mod Podge. Now here I'm taking my glue gun and this thing I tell you there's a reason I took it to the cabin and I think there's a reason it's going to end up in the garbage um, but anyway so I'm starting to do my tree here and I end up stopping shortly after I started um, and you'll see why. Um, anyways um, when you're creating the tree you're going to want to go back and forth as many times as you can or till it looks like tree bark i guess but you want lots of layers lots of bumps and crevices and all of that kind of great stuff when you're creating your tree with the glue gun so i quite often go back and forth over the same the same area now um, it was about right here that all of a sudden I thought, yeah, should have painted the background first. So I stopped and there I am picking off the glue gun, uh, glue that I had adhered to my canvas. And yeah, it didn't come off as easy as I thought it would. And I wasn't really too concerned if the uh, tissue paper ripped again and it did. And I just adhered another layer of it back onto the canvas. So here I am, almost forgot to turn the camera back on, and I'm just painting my background. And what I'm doing is I've got some Prussian blue, some ultramarine blue, and some light blue permanent on my um, little plastic, it's the plastic ruler is all it is. Um, and I'm just dipping the brush into the colors randomly. There really isn't a whole lot of thought going into it and I am just making brush strokes. I'm trying to create a little bit more dimension, a little bit more interest in my background um, by adding the different colors because you don't want to just slap all the same color of blue onto your, onto your sky. It's just not going to look, na uh, you know, all that natural. And I'm kind of trying to create a, a winter stormy blustery scene here, right? So that's why I've got some of the dark colors and some of the light in there and um, etc. So I just continue to add all of the paint until the whole canvas is covered. And making sure you do your edges. Don't ever forget about your edges when you're doing a canvas because you'll see that when it's hung up on the wall, that's for sure. So here I am now doing the actual tree and fighting with this glue gun again. Um, yeah, this thing is just wonderful. And also there's this big gob of I don't even know what came out of the glue gun, but anyways, I went with it. It was going to get covered up anyways. Uh, it almost looks, looks like it was a hunk of white or something. I don't know. Anyways, it melted and came through the glue gun, whatever it was. And so I continued on and um, you'll see me just creating the bark here of the tree. And again, back and forth, back and forth, just creating that textural bark for the tree. Now I go into fast forward mode again here and kind of almost went completely off frame 
I got so enthralled with doing this tree that I, I forgot I was recording and where the camera was and where my canvas was, so I apologize for that. But I think you do get the idea of what you're doing here. I'm just doing branches, bigger branches, littler branches, and just, yeah, I'm having fun. I'm having fun with it. Um, now here is, I'm all done with the tree, and now I'm just going back and adding more texture. I'm trying to build it up in the center as much as I can because I want there to be, you'll see, I'll show you a close up when I'm done here of what I was trying to accomplish. But here I'm just, after I'm all done again, just going back through and kind of filling in some holes, some gaps, getting rid of some little stringy chunks of glue that were there and all that kind of stuff. This was actually a pretty fun project to do, even if I did do it twice. Again, just going back through, I guess I've kind of cut out some of this footage. Going back again and just trying to fix some of the holes. Glue gun drawing is not an exact science by any stretch of the imagination. And with that glue gun that I had there, it was a bit of a challenge to say the least, trying to get that thing to do what I wanted it to do. When I got home from our cabin, um, I actually did some fixing on it with my glue gun at home. So here I'm back home and I'm ready to start painting. Uh, before I do, I do show you a close-up of the dimension that I achieved with the tree. And then you kind of get an idea of what you're going to be going for. Bring it up over the light. Maybe I get that light out of the way. So there you go. You'll see. And it's gobby in it. And it doesn't look like anything, right? But it doesn't matter because you're going to be covering it with paint. And you can see what the dimension I got on there trying to make it look like a rounded tree. I put that gob of glue. I think I talk about that a little bit to make it look like there was a knot in the tree. And that was actually my son's idea when we were at the cabin. He said, well, put a gob there, Mom. <laughs> so I did. And it actually it turned out good. So there is my tree. All ready for paint. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the white in the background first. I just used a little of a plastic container um, onto, the, onto the burlap first. Because when I paint the brown of the tree... I, I think it would just be easier to cover up if I do get some on the white or on the burlap if there was some white paint on it already. Um, the colors of brown that I used was burnt umber and I used the Mars black. I was considering using my burnt sienna, but I think it would have been too um, too red. And yeah, an email just came in, so you heard my computer ding. Um, anyway, so here I am just filling in the burlap with the white, doing the edges as well. And um, it doesn't matter if I go over top of the glue gun um, tree. The glue gun actually works as a resist. So keep that in mind if you ever want to do a resist technique and you're looking for something different to use as your resist, grab your glue gun because it seriously wipes right off. Yeah, I, I dried it. You have to be careful when you're drying paint when you've got glue gun down because, yeah, it'll melt the glue. No, I didn't do that, but uh, it, will melt. it will melt the glue. So I took a baby wipe, you'll see, or you saw me there, and I just wiped off the white paint off of the roots of the tree. Taking a brush, and I'm just doing a mixture of the burnt umber and the Mars black, and just going in with different tones. Again, trying to create that look of tree bark with the um, darker and the lighter tones as the different levels of bark are on the trees. So realize that that brush is far too big for what I'm wanting to do, so I grab a smaller one and continue to paint. Um, being careful to try to get along the edges um, of the glue as well. And again, just dipping my brush in the two different colors. Wherever there's a hollow um, that I created with the glue gun is where I went in with the black, trying to create those darker shadows. Um, and yeah, you just, just play with it. I mean, it's, it's fun. It's fun. So yeah, much better. I think I went to even smaller brush still when I got to these little branches. And sometimes I have to go over it a few times. You'll see I keep going back. Uh, either I've missed a place or I 
brush stroked over top of it too many times and it created its own resist and almost wiped the paint back off again. So to create your layers of paint, you're going to want to kind of let it dry in between applications. So yeah, I'm just painting to my little heart's content on my little beautiful branches I made. I added more branches on this tree than I did the first one that I did, and I like it a little bit better. I really like the dimension, so there you get a good idea of the dimension that I achieved. You can see the darker spots in the middle where the, the bark goes in. I put the, the black, or mixed it with the, with the brown and the black. So yeah, I was quite happy with it when it was all done. I think it looks quite good, quite tree-like. So there you see it doesn't really matter if it's a gob of glue or whatever it still it still covers nicely taking my finger i love to um I, I like to paint with my fingers quite often but i'm just trying to fill in over top of that burlap just so that it's not so a stark edge and then i finally gave up with my fingers and took a stiffer brush and just kind of made a little bit of a, an edge now i'm taking my little brush and the white paint and putting snow in the branches that it's accumulated storming out you know um, so yeah that's all I'm doing is just adding the snow and then along the branches a little bit along the roots and then I take the paintbrush and put some into the little crevices in the tree in a couple of places as well and then I spray down well, I guess a little, bit, little bit more stippling there spray down the white paint take my fan brush and start to tap it and it's a little bit too thick so I add some more water and start to splatter and I think I kind of went crazy with my splatter it must have been quite a snowstorm in my little head because <laughs> I put a lot of splatters down you should have seen me and the uh, table by the time I was done holy cow there were splatters everywhere so there is my finished canvas and I love it I really really like it um, I was quite happy with it when it was all done and I didn't on this one, I did on the other one, I kind of added some glitter to the snow. I'm not much of a glitter person, so I didn't bother with this canvas to add that uh, to the finished product. So I just left it as the plain white. But yeah, I'm quite happy with my wintry scene as I have it there. So yeah, you can see the splatters on my hand. <laughs> Anyways, thank you once again for coming along on my little project. Please subscribe if you haven't uh, subscribed to my channel yet. Or somewhere in here, I'll give you a thumbs up. So give me a thumbs up if you like it. Um, comment. I love reading comments. Um, any ideas if you want of any other uh, techniques or videos you'd like me to do, I'd be more than happy to oblige. Um, so yes, thank you very much for coming. And till the next video. Bye-bye.